Hey everybody, this is 20 to Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is the spin-off in the Wizarding World. It takes place 70 years before the Harry Potter films. The film is written by author J.K. Rowling. And this film is directed by David Yates who brought you the last four Harry Potter films. Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows Part 1. Part two, and the film has the talent of Eddie Redmayne, Colin Farrell, Ezra Miller, and Dan Fogler. So Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them follows the story of Newt Scamander, who is this rider, and he comes to New York, but there are certain beasts that find a way to escape from his briefcase, so it's up to Newt Scamander along with Tina and Kowalski to go ahead and get these beasts back, and also they do have to stop Colin Farrell. So Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was a film that I was actually really really hyped for. In fact, if you guys have watched my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2016, I put this film at number 3. This was really high in my anticipated list because I really am a fan of The Wizarding World. I've really enjoyed the Harry Potter movies. You know, there were some that I really enjoyed, I liked, real liked, loved, you know. Whatever the case is, I've honestly really enjoyed all the Harry Potter films, whether it's in the like or love level. And so, with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I was just really excited for it because I love the fact that it's another story of The Wizarding World, but we follow a new set of characters and it takes place before you know, the original Harry Potter franchise, and it was really exciting to me. And when they announced this film a couple of years ago, it had me excited. And ever since then, it's been two years of me just waiting for this film, and it's finally here. And after seeing Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, oh my goodness, it feels so good to be back in the Wizarding World. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them really put a huge smile on my face. It brought back the magic, definitely. It brought what I love so much about this world, this very imaginative and creative world. And the characters, you know, something you want when you go into this film, you want the characters to have as much charm, as much personality as the characters in the Harry Potter films, but also stand on their own. And I have to say, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them definitely succeeds at doing that. I personally really enjoyed all the characters in this film. I really enjoyed Newt Scamander played by Eddie Redmayne. I thought he did a really good job as Newt Scamander. He had that awkward but also very charming personality to him and I thought Eddie Redmayne portrayed that character so well. I love Newt Scamander and I personally am looking forward to seeing what the, the rest of this franchise can do because I heard there's going to be five of these Fantastic Beasts films and I'm honestly up for five movies. Um, you know, as long as David Yates is still directing, which I have heard he is, as long as J.K. Rowling is writing these films, which I have heard she is, then honestly we have a good franchise in our hands. Good or great for that matter. I also did actually really enjoy Dan Fogler. I really thought he did a very good job acting here because we haven't quite seen J Dan Fogler in a role like this. So it was pretty cool to see him. Not only that, but it's been a long time since I've last seen Dan Fogler. So to see him pretty much back in a movie, but back in the Wizarding World is so cool. And Kowalski, you would think, is that character that was just going to be that typical guy that tags along with the gang. But no, as the film progresses, there's actually more to Kowalski that you learn to appreciate. And I thought Dan Fogler just portrayed that sense of awe to that character so well. You know, when the character is just looking around and being mind blown by the magic that surrounds him. Someone that I actually did really like in this film is Catherine Waterston. She plays the character of Tina, who at first does investigate Newt Scamander 
and um, Kowalski, but then, you know, she ends up helping them out later. I really liked her. I thought she was actually a very interesting character, and I really liked how she would interact with Newt Scamander. That was very nice right there. And I actually even really liked her sister. I thought the sister was really nice, in which, yes, Kowalski and her, they do have this romance plot, which actually didn't bother me. Granted, it's not the most necessary thing, definitely, but I actually thought for what was given, it didn't really feel forced to me. Sure, it came out of nowhere when these two characters meet, but it didn't really feel forced to me. I actually dug their little cute romance. And I also do have to say that Colin Farrell kicked ass in this film as the antagonist of the film. I thought he was really great. There's not really much of him in this film, definitely, but for how they definitely used Colin Farrell, I thought they used him at the right amount of time. And the same thing does go for Ezra Miller, you know, the guy that's going to be the Flash in Justice League next year. Yeah, he's in this film, and he is involved with Colin Farrell without really spoiling anything. I really do not want to give much details, but I thought whenever the film did cut to him and Colin Farrell, it was very interesting. I was always just interested in what was going on screen with how the film was leading up to the climax. And something I definitely have to say about this film are the special effects. While maybe, yes, there's a few times where the CGI can be a little too noticeable, just a few times, honestly, I thought overall the visual effects were very, very impressive. I love the look. I thought the creatures looked so great. Um, there's this platypus looking creature that tries to steal all these jewelries, and I thought he was just so cute. Whenever you see them waving their wands and you see magic coming out, just like with the original Harry Potter films, it all looked very clean. It looked beautiful. They really knew how to use the visual effects, just like with the Harry Potter films. I was very impressed visually with how Fantastic Beast was. And yeah, the action scenes themselves, there's not a ton of them, but when there is action, it's very exciting. Although I will say, even though this film does set up a lot of things, it doesn't really feel like a setup movie. This movie still feels like like it's standing on its own. It's still telling its own story without feeling like a setup movie. Because I never felt like once this was a setup movie, it just felt like an entirely different story. And it was very refreshing, honestly. And something that I was definitely impressed by is that they didn't really have to rely too much on the Harry Potter franchise. I actually really liked that this film stood on its own. Yes, here and there, they'll maybe make a little reference, but not to really confuse the audience that hasn't seen the Harry Potter films. So it's all like, even if you haven't seen any of the Harry Potter movies, you're honestly fine watching Fantastic Beasts. You could follow the story well, you could follow the characters well. You could just follow this wizarding world very well. This film truly does bring back the magic of the Harry Potter movies. Everything just feels so magical and wondrous. There's so much imagination and creativity. And that's honestly huge credit to J.K. Rowling for writing this film. And of course, the man that's known for bringing magic to life is David Yates. He did a great job directing this film. David Yates, um, I think it was great that they got him to do this and the other sequels for what I'm hearing because he, this man directing the second half of the Harry Potter movies in the franchise he understands how to build the world he knows how to build just the atmosphere of this wizarding world so David Yates did a really good job directing this film just the cinematography which is something I have to mention looks absolutely beautiful the cinematography David Yates's direction and J.K. Rowling's writing is definitely what truly gets you sucked into the Wizarding World. If it weren't for them, I can't really see Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them being as magical of a film, but because of that, it really does help this world. And I have to say, there's one moment towards the end of the film where I actually did get a little bit emotional and I thought it was actually executed very well on where they took that one emotional moment towards the end of Fantastic Beasts. That was really great. And the climax itself, I actually did think it was very, very interesting to be honest. But now when it does come to Fantastic Beasts, I'm not going to deny there are some problems with this film. One of the problems for me, honestly, is 
is Colin Farrell's motivation. I did think that it was very confusing, although I was still very, very invested with the subplot with him and Ezra Miller. I was still like, where is this going? I was still going back and forth on where exactly they're going with it. It's not really until once you get to the climax where everything comes together, all of a sudden starts to make sense. I still kind of wish though that the motivation did make more sense for the majority though because before that climax I was scratching my head sometimes during the film. Also I'm not going to deny there are some pacing problems with Fantastic Beasts. The first act is honestly a little bit slow. It does really uh, take a while to get going. Not that it was bad or anything. I still found myself slightly invested with the first act but I definitely wasn't invested in it as I was with the second act and definitely the third act and speaking of the second act although I was really getting into it there's even some moments during the second act that I did find to be quite slow as well I will also say I never felt really emotionally attached to this film either like I said there's only that one emotional scene towards the end of the film where I was like wow that was quite powerful. That was very well executed. But besides that, any other attempt they did to make you feel kind of emotional sometimes, I never really did feel emotionally connected to the film and I wish there was a little bit more of that. And although the climax is very exciting, there's no denying there, I did think that the climax was just a little bit rushed and how the climax does end, it definitely did feel just a little bit anticlimactic to be honest. And the last problem, I will say about this film is that it does take a little while for this film to find its ending. Like there's one moment where you think it's going to end but then they have another moment. I still had my curiosity but at the same time it had like three or four different kind of endings until once the film actually did actually reach to the end credits. But overall you guys, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them I think is a solid start to the Harry Potter spin-off franchise, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I think this is a very cool way to bring us back to the wizarding world. Whether you're a fan of the Harry Potter franchise or you're new to the Harry Potter franchise or I should say the wizarding world at this point, it was honestly really cool to just be back in this world. I could not be any happier. This is by no means like one of the best films I've seen this year. This is not a film you're going to see me put in my top 10 list or let alone my top 20 best films. But Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, for what they need to do, I say it's still really delivered. And it has me interested to see where we're going to go with the sequels. So I'm going to give Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 3 out of 4 stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Also, you guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to Justin Watch's movies because I actually did get to review Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire with Justin um, as part of his series of Harry Potter reviews. So if you guys want to check out that review, I will leave a link to that review in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!